are you creating a business or are you just giving yourself a job? Because if you cannot step away from your business, you just have a job and you maybe work for yourself, but it really is just a job. And what I got very interested in was, you know, how do I take the, the cash that I'm making and when the business is doing well and invest it so that it's there when I need it? Because there's the, you know, the investment for the long term. But as an entrepreneur, sometimes you have those days where you just need money today. Hello, Profit Purse entrepreneurs and thought leaders. I am so excited. We have a special guest today. Her name is Tara Nolan. Now, Tara offers a unique and specialized approach to really looking at life and reinventing yourself. Tara has actually been a member of the U.S. Air Force. She's actually still a member serving in the U.S. Air Force. So hats up for, for Tara for that. Um, and she combines 26 years of strategic military planning with her knowledge of entrepreneurship, finance, as well as personal development to provide transformational talks. And she specializes in helping smart people who have limited time due to business and family demands really achieve and retain the lifestyle that they want. Now, Tara is the owner of Nolan Financial Services. And today we are going to talk about really securing your future as an entrepreneur. So please join me in welcoming Tara to the platform. Hi, Tara. How are you? Hey, Suzanne. I'm so happy to be here. This is, uh, you know, I, I get excited talking about finance and entrepreneurship. So I'm really looking forward to this conversation. Well, this is a big, important topic, right? Because, you know, if you don't make steps along the way to start building your future, you know, when you get there and you're ready to retire, it won't be there for you. Right. And especially as entrepreneurs, you know, a lot of entrepreneurs think that when they're, when they're building a business, that that is their retirement and, and they don't realize that there's a necessity to really diversify their assets, right? Especially when you're in profit first and you've got all this cash, right? We need to be really putting it away strategically in order to do what we needed to do when we needed to do it. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And I think one of the things, cause I started out before I got into investment and finance, I started as an entrepreneur. And one of the things that really resonated with me at the time was, are you creating a business or are you just giving yourself a job? Because if you cannot step away from your business, you just have a job and you maybe work for yourself, but it really is just a job. And what I got very interested in was, you know, how do I take the, the cash that I'm making and when the business is doing well and invest it so that it's there when I need it? Because there's the, you know, the investment for the long term. But as an entrepreneur, sometimes you have those days where you just need money today. And so how do you put money into an investment that is going to be accessible when you need it? And, and so it's looking at all these different pieces. And, I, you know, I don't know exactly how you started out early on, but in the military, you're a W-2 earner. And so you get used to that paycheck every month and, you know, you wake up in the morning and you're going to get paid. It's a good government job. And then you make this shift to be an entrepreneur. And all of a sudden, if you don't get someone to give you some money, you don't get paid. <laughs> and so you go from this space of just because you're busy doesn't mean you're um, getting ahead or working. And so it's, it's like looking at, okay, how you have your business and putting it aside, right? Because isn't one of the goals to have that passive income stream? Oh yeah, definitely. No one wants to work forever, right? Right, right. <laughs> if you want to, but not because you have to. Exactly. Exactly. So Tara, tell us about what goes into really building a secure future, especially as entrepreneurs, what should we be doing on the everyday in order to, to start building that? Well, I, I, I love this question because what you really need to do as an entrepreneur is you have to build your team. And you know, when you're starting out with your business, you're small, so it's you and yourself. <laughs> and then you start to re realize you can't do it all yourself. So you start hopefully bringing in the virtual assistant and bringing in the CPA to help with your taxes. And, and you start building those people. And it's hard, right? Because you're starting out and you're like, I have no money. <laughs> Everything I have needs to go into the business. I can't build this team. So you have to find that balance to say, if you want to get up to that next level, who else do I bring to be part of my team so I can focus on the business and what I'm really good at? But then all the other things that still have to happen still have to happen. And it's hard because, you know, like a GE or Apple, these big companies, they have human resources and they have their tech support. They have all that. As an entrepreneur, it's small, but you still have all those needs. And, and so I think one of the biggest things you have to start thinking about right away is what do I need and what help can I get? And, and how do I access that help in a way I can't go bankrupt paying for the help? 
you know, it's that chicken and egg kind of question. Exactly. Yeah. You have to get your, your business stable, right? That's the first thing, right? And making sure that it can scale um, so that it can produce those cash flows um, to be able to, to grow for you. Now, um, tell me about in terms of like, so the first step is to really start to build your foundation, build your team and, and get the resources behind you. Um, what are some tips that we need to do in order to do that? Well, you know, I'm a big believer and it starts with asking a good question because sometimes I think in finance, especially as it relates to your business, you don't know what you don't know. And so that's where it starts. So there's three questions I always encourage everybody to be asking so that if you don't know the answers to these questions, here's where you start. So the first question is, how much is enough? I mean, do you need 1 million or 10 million or, you know, what is the number? Because if you don't know what target you're aiming for, you can't make a plan to get there. So how much is enough? And I think there's almost levels, like there's how much you want, there's a little bit lower level of this will cover my basic needs. And then there's the goal of what you really want to get to, but you need to know what that number is. That second question you need to ask is, am I on track to get there? So let's just say your number is 10 million and you're here at the at starting it's never a straight line, right? You think of that X, Y graph, <laughs> you never have that nice straight line. So you have to start thinking about um, how am I going to get there? And when you're starting a business, it's more like that little loopy game from like Candyland or shoots and ladders where you go and then you go down and you go back up <laughs> and you go around. So you have to figure out here's where I'm trying to go. And you look at it, you know, at least once a year to go, Hey, am I tracking? Do I need to adjust and, and figure that out? And then the third thing is, am I paying too much in taxes? Because, I mean, you know this as a CPA, it, it, with the laws that are in place today, it's not about how much you make, it's about how much you get to keep. And, and you can go through and just look at how much legislation has impacted how we're able to save for retirement, what the pension availability is. And it, it's just, it's almost like crazy because it's not really about math or the stock market. It's really about the tax code is like almost the driver for a lot of the decisions we have to make. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, the, the more you save on taxes, the larger the base that you're going to be able to reinvest. Right. Um, so definitely, you know, definitely be like Warren Buffett, like what he says, he pays less taxes than his secretary. So, right? um, the lower you can get that bracket, the better off you can, the more you can infer that, that the better off you'll be. Um, and so Tara, I guess I'm in terms of securing your future. Um, what steps should we take to do that? So the first thing is it really starts with trust, right? Because there's, I think I Googled financial planners online and there were 215 million oh results. So how, <laughs> how are you going to sort through that? That's crazy. So it starts with, you know, the referrals are great, but you want to find a planner that you're going to trust because it's, it's very personal, right? Money is so much more emotion and much less about math. And, and someone's going to get in your space. It's almost like finding a doctor that you want to work with because it's going to get very personal, but you're going to find someone that's, um, that you're going to trust. And, and here's two questions I like to ask when you're interviewing for your financial planner is one, do you know how to give my money a job? And I find good financial planners understand this idea, but you're working hard for your money. So your money should be working for you too. And just to kind of think about the concept is, um, because the other question I would ask is, how many jobs can my money have? Because like, think about money in your bank account. That bank account has one job. It's to be ready for emergencies. So it's liquid. You're not really gonna earn any kind of uh, rate of return. And once it's spent, it's just gone. But then let's think about now like an IRA. An IRA is two jobs. It's growing in a tax advantaged account it's going to be mostly protected from lawsuits. So right off the bat, two jobs. And then you can go on and think about like real estate. Real estate, you're going to be growing some equity. You have an asset that is, that is there for you. You get to take tax deductions from the property. So there's different, once you have this pot of money and that you know you need to grow it, there's different ways to grow it. And what you're going to want when you're looking as an entrepreneur in your financial planner, someone who understands there's a whole lot more to life than setting up an IRA and buying some insurance. Oh yeah. Those are good things, but that's not everything. Definitely. 
So what other things do we need to consider with that? Because, you know, that's important, you know, making sure that you partner with the right people that, you know, can really help you set your business up for success with that. Um, once you find that perfect partner, really, what are, what are the next steps with that? Then the next things is a lot of it is really becoming aware of what your financial baggage is, it, you know, and, and we all have it you, from however you grew up with your family. You know, some people are lucky and they learn about money as a kid. I, I was not one of those people. So I've had to spend a lot of time playing catch up as an adult. So figuring out what those things are, but like, it, it's really interesting how people have like a good example is I have a lot of clients that have this spreadsheet in their head that is unique to them. <laughs> and so the way they categorize and organize money and put it together is very unique. And, and we all have little quirks like this. So you want to become aware of what your little quirks are so that you're not making decisions about money that don't make sense. One common thing I see a lot of people do is they'll put a bracket around money that like this is set aside for this special event. And then that special event will just never materialize. And then this money doesn't end up working for them though. They like have it just stuck in a bank account. So you want to make sure you've identified any resources because like one of the first things to do is look at your entire financial world like let's say it was a pie and you want to make sure that you don't have any money tucked away sitting somewhere not working for you first before you start saying well i can't go to starbucks anymore <laughs> you want to start going how do i maximize and then here's the thing with young people and entrepreneurs is you go i don't make enough money right now to be investing because i have to be putting the money back into the business or younger folks, or I'm like paying off my college debt. Just like working out, you got to start a habit. So even when you get started, even if it's just, you know, 50 to 100 bucks a month and then growing, you want to create these habit patterns where you have automatically uh, money is growing, going into your savings account, going into your longer term investments, going into those investment. Um, and there's different tools, especially for entrepreneurs that I would talk about with you one on one that allow you to grow your asset, but then give you access to the money when you need it. So starting your habit pattern right now is imperative because time, right? Time is your biggest friend. You know, you can hear about your buddy at work that's talking about, well, I invested in, you know, GE stock or whatever, and it was amazing. And, you know, I got, in, got into this ground floor of this dot com, and that was amazing. You never hear the bad stories, right? <laughs> you only hear the stories about when people did amazing the best thing you do is you start a process that you stick with. It's not glamorous or sexy, but that's what you need to do. <laughs> I love that. That is really neat. Um, and you're right. You know, it's that power of compounding um, returns, right? Um, a dollar doesn't equal a dollar in like 30 years, right? right? That can be like, you know, four or five times what it was when you first started. I remember when I first started my career at Anderson, you know, I was like 22, 23 years old and I ran this amortization table, big word for you guys out there, um, to figure out if I put away, how much do I need to do in order to be a millionaire? You know, by the time I think I was like 50 or something was my goal. Right. Uh, when you're 23 to like 50 is like so old when you're, when you're, when you're at that <laughs> point and it ended up being like $33, like $33 a week, um, just put away $33 a week and, and become a millionaire. Um, you know, if you said it was 12% interest rate or 12% growth per year. Right. And it's amazing just what those little things that you do, those little halves, like you said, make maybe, you know, I don't know if Starbucks will kill you today or tomorrow, but, you know, just putting away, you know, that, that, that little bit every single week and, and being consistent about it. Yeah, it, that really, it, that really is, it's, it's not magic and it, it, but it is hard. Like, cause I know when I went, I was in the Air Force for a while and then I was like, I'm going all in and I'm going to start my real estate investing business. And, and I wait, I'm like, well, I can spend time like the next 15 years trying to figure it out or I can just invest in education and, and learn. And, and I did probably not the best thing, but I wiped out all of my 401ks. They were just gone. So um, that I, I wouldn't probably recommend that to my clients now because you pay the penalties and you do all that. But the thing was, is I did that and, and I have recouped that because for me, investing in myself early on, because versus taking 20 years, 10 years to figure things out was the way to go for me. It's such a different world when you have a, a W-2 job where you're getting a paycheck and that's kind of how big your world is, right? Because you know what that paycheck's going to be. And an entrepreneur, it's like this roller coaster. 
where you you're like all of a sudden you're eating macaroni and cheese and digging through the couch cushions for money and, and then you, you you take off and you make all this money and then you go oh no what am, <laughs> what am I gonna now I made all this money what am I gonna do and you have to figure out how to to manage that and it's interesting because some people are not good at that like like my dad is my biggest example of he'll make he just can't stand to have money it just burns a hole in his pocket and, and he'll spend it so as an entrepreneur you have to have that ability and that place to go when you make your money where are you going to put it and it's good to know that before you make your money exactly that because is so true <laughs> if you wait until after you've made your money then it's a little it's overwhelming oh and yeah it's, it's almost like those people that win the lottery right and that's why I like Profit First too, Tara, is because, you know, in Profit First, you know, we force our business owners to pay themselves first, right? We force them to take a salary. We, t- we force them to make profit and we, we force them to put away for retained earnings. And, and, and of course we celebrate every quarter with that shareholder distribution, right? Or, or that dividend that happens, you know, when we, we take half of it and we either, if there's no debt, we, we get to celebrate. And I mean, I'm buying a piano, my first one. But one of the things that, that I like to see is, you know, not just paying yourself first is, you know, a lot of times we have direct deposit for our employees, right? And literally just set it up the same way for you. You know, you have direct deposit that goes straight into your investment account, right? And, you know, you have the part of the money that goes into your regular account, but there's a set aside, whether it be a percentage or dollar amount that always goes towards that retirement account. And you're just creating that habit where you're building wealth. And, and if you do it by percentage of income, right? Like, like Tara says, when you have no money, you know, you got a little bit going in, but when your business really takes off and you got a whole lot more, then you're putting away more in, right? And so your, your investments are growing with you too. I also like what Tara said too, that sometimes investing doesn't necessarily mean in stocks and bonds, it could be investing in your career, right? Or investing in your knowledge in your space. And it's understanding how quickly are you going to get that ROI it, that compared to like, if you didn't make that investment too. So a lot of really good golden nuggets with that. So I'm, and I'm really interested. I, that's one of the things that really attracted me to profit first is you use and enforce that adage of pay yourself first. And that is so important. And I think I, I would totally agree with you is that Percentage is a good way because that way it fluctuates. So if you have a dollar, it's 10 cents. If you have $100,000, you know, it's $10,000. So that's something that you can wrap your head around. Whereas if you try to, to lock in and say, I'm going to save $1,000 a month, you know, starting out, maybe you can, but then what do you do when you have a month where you, you need, you have some emergencies and you can't do it and then you fall off the wagon. And so just by having it as a percentage, it allows you to grow and that habit just grows. So I really like that. I'd be interested to know, though, with Profit First, um, just as we're talking, how else do you think that we kind of can work together? Because your CPA and your Profit First, I just, I'm always, I love how we can help people. Yeah, you know, I think, you know, as a CPA, you know, and as a Profit First professional, we're really great at setting up systems, right, to reach the ultimate goal. Um, I think the financial advisory side is like a completely different side. Um, yeah, I can recommend mutual funds and things that I do, but, you know, definitely a professional like you is more important in terms of actually looking at the portfolio, making sure that it performs the way it needs to perform so that, that someone can retire when they want to versus when they have to, right? Right. Well, and like you're saying, I mean, to me, a CPA is critical on my team because, I mean, I, I know the big questions to ask, but you get paid the big bucks to keep up with the law every year. <laughs> <laughs> and like, it was life-changing for us in our real estate business when we went from a tax preparer who was doing things right to our CPA who specialized in real estate. He's like, you know, I see how you're doing it, but if we just made this and this and this change, he saved us so much money. And it was all legal, right? We weren't doing anything illegal, <laughs> but it was just because there's that flexibility and working with the professional that really understands and goes, okay, you told me your goal is to get here. Well, let me help you get there because it's about creating that the best path to get there. And, uh, you know, and then I, you know, just like a CPA, I have a healthcare specialist. I don't try to be the expert at everything. I love it. I don't have to be the smartest person in the room. I just have to know where they are. (laughs) Exactly. You know, I always figure it out. It's, it's about how do I get there the fastest and the best way. Right. Um, 
And, and sometimes that means me picking up a course and learning it myself. And sometimes it means finding someone else that's going to be a whole lot better than I will ever be at it to have them do it too. Right. Um, I know like what my husband and I, what we did early on is, you know, after, one of the great things about if you buy your home, you know, at some point you'll have no mortgage and you'll always have a lock fixed in payment. So, you know, you're not going to deal with like um, rent that goes up, you know, every year, mm -hmm. you know, it's a fixed payment. And so we literally were able to lock in our living expenses, which was really neat. Um, and, and what we did was, you know, we decided that we were going to always, when we first started our career, like 20 years ago, we we're like always going to live off like $40,000. <laughs> <laughs> and, and what it did is as we got raises or we made more money, it allowed us to invest more, right. And put right. away more in retirement. And it was just being disciplined about, you know, this is how much we live on. We might do a little teeny weeny increase for cost of living. And, but then eventually you'll pay off the house. And, and literally that was another way that we did first from a strategic standpoint in terms of being able to retire and make sure that we got in the habit of putting away money. Now, Tara, tell me where investing goes wrong. Where does it go wrong in your experience of working with business owners and entrepreneurs or even just regular clients really with it? I can tell you exactly where it goes wrong. Investing goes wrong when you just do what you hear somebody else saying they're super excited about or when you have a solution that's not solving your problem and and i can give you a great example just happened last week is one of my clients came in and he was really excited he was like i want to use municipal bonds for my emergency fund the guy at work is doing them and they're tax-free and i said and i said well i said tax-free is great I, I like tax-free i said but did you say emergency fund well yeah because it's tax-free i said well here's the thing an emergency fund is there when you have an emergency and you need to get money quick and uh, is how, how what do, have you researched these bonds? Like how quickly can you get the money? Well, well I don't know, but they're great. <laughs> so, so we just talked about it. I said, well, well, why don't we look at your plan? Because we can certainly incorporate some municipal bonds in your plan because they are tax-free and that's a good thing. But for your emergency fund, we want to make sure that you have the point of that emergency fund is to stop you from putting things on credit cards and building debt. I mean, that's what the emergency fund is. And this is what I have happen all the time. We have another client who came and she's was in an annuity, which is a good tool when you're trying to protect. Right. But she's still working. She's not that old. And last year it was a weird one. And she earned 0.5 percent when the market was going like easily 12 percent. All of our clients were, I think some of our clients were up in the 30%, not standard, but, you know, a lot more than 0.5%. And so she's super angry about it. And so obviously there was a disconnect, right? Because whoever put her into that annuity was thinking protection. Let's make sure you don't lose any money. But that's not what she was thinking. And so this is where it goes wrong is when the tool that you select, the investment tool, whether it's the market, a stock, a bond, a mutual fund, is not doing the thing that you thought it was going to do for you. And so, and that's the thing is I think people try to make decisions like insurance is bad or insurance is wonderful or the market is bad. Insurance in the market, they don't care. They just are what they are. And the question is, is that the tool that you need to solve your problem? Does that kind of make sense? Yeah, absolutely. It completely makes sense, you know, because even things like what's going on in the market, right? Um, you know, if the, the market is, is, is suffering, right? Maybe you don't want to be in a place where you're keeping all everything in stocks, right? Maybe it's time to start stabilizing things, withdrawing as cash, selling those out before the market goes down and, and, and reinvesting in more stable assets or buying more as you go, as, as the market goes back up, right? Right. Um, also your age, right? Depending on your age, maybe it, you know, it's time to start having more of a conservative approach, right? Where oh, you're weird. not going to be affected by it. Right. Um, and then, you know, muni bonds, they're not necessarily, you know, a high rate of return, but they are tax free, you know? And so again, it's just, when is that situation appropriate? And just having a financial advisor like you, Tara, to, to advise that, Hey, market conditions are changing. Um, it's time to get out. You know? Oh, you're just, I, I can think of so many stories. I have one of my clients and they're so funny. He's got all of his market, all his money, 100% in the market. And he's 76 now. The only reason they came to me was they're interviewing somebody to take care of his wife when he passes. But right now they have enough money. He could bury it in the backyard and they would be fine. But instead he has 100% of his money in the market. And I'm like, do you really want to risk a 2001 or 2008 and lose 50% of your assets? Do you really want to do that? 
and he just he he likes he likes seeing looking online and seeing that he's right on that tick mark of being a millionaire. He just loves it. And I'm like, oh my gosh, <laughs> can we just protect a little bit of that? <laughs> and, and he won't do it, but but uh, you know now now he knows he's aware. <laughs> yeah, I, I had to personally get a big chuckle what was going on about a month ago at GameStop where people were buying. I'm like, y'all know y'all gonna about to get burned, right? <laughs> You guys know that this stock is not worth that amount, but you know, I guess more of it was, it was the cause of saving the video game industry right, <laughs> was, right. was propelling it for it um, with that. And, you know, depending on what side you are, you know, some people made a lot of money, but a lot of people lost too. Um, right. taking the cause. When you get into that part of the market and that's always gone on. So let's not kid ourselves. I mean, technology's made it easier, but this has always gone on in, in the market. There are people that gamble and, the people that have large pots of money to gamble with, you know, if you win, you're a hero. <laughs> and if you lose, you're Bernie Madoff. <laughs> so exactly. it's, it's really looking at what are you doing and, and understanding. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's the thing is we, people hear the stories like GameStop and some people won and they get super excited. It's like, yeah, there's a lot more like that's the surface. There's layers of complexity there. So things are not like just black and white simple, which we'd all like to think like things are just super simple, but it's not always that easy. Yeah. You have to think about what your long-term strategy is, you know, because there are people that lost thousands of dollars, unfortunately, in that game of GameStop with that. Um, So Tara, one of the things I like to ask our guests as we wind down is um, if you could leave our viewers and listeners with one piece of advice, it can be personal, it can be business, that would something that would be life-changing. What would that advice be? Okay. So let me think about that. So I would say, first of all, if Finance and taking care of yourself financially is on your should do list and you haven't done anything about it. Don't beat yourself up about it. Give yourself permission. It's okay because you're not alone. But the thing to do today is take some action today to think about where you are and ask those questions. How much is enough? Am I on track to get there? And am I paying too much in taxes? So if you were just to do one thing today, though, I would say get to that financial junk drawer you have and organize, just organize everything. Because that's the first step, no matter what you're going to do is to go, okay, what IRAs do I have? What bank accounts do I have? What insurance do I have? All the different puzzles and pieces. What rental properties do you have? What's my business doing? And just get it all organized in one place. And then you'll be ready to, to step out and start making something happen. I love that. So sitting there and just planning, right? Planning to cre- and then creating the action steps based upon what it is that you really want in order to get there. That's some really great advice. Now, Tara, in terms of like being able to reach you and contact you and work with you, what is the best way for our viewers to reach you? So the best two ways. So you can look at my website, www.taraenolan.com, or you can just give us a call at 719-210-4242. We'll do a complimentary uh, initial conversation to see uh, what you need, where we are, and if there's a meeting in the middle. Thank you, Tara. That's just amazing. And I will go ahead and put your your contact information in the show notes so that our viewers can reach out to you and work with you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you very much for being on our show today. It was so much fun. I love it. Thank you, Tara.